with me today, Stephanie Perry Moore. Yes, though you have issues, if you give it to Him, you truly can live your purpose. You can live and be all that God's called you to be. Welcome to Heritage of Truth. My name is Patty, and I have with me today Stephanie Perry Moore. Thank you so much for coming. Patty, thanks for having me. Oh, great. Uh, Stephanie has written a series of books for young girls, and um, they are just, uh, I was just so excited when I picked out a few things that were in the book. And I work with middle school girls, and I know they are constantly reading and I know how important it is. Uh, a lot of the characters that we read, they really shape our lives. They become our heroines. Yeah. And uh, I just, I think it's awesome with the, the emphasis that you have on your books. Uh, tell us the name of this one. This the, is Right Thing, and this is book four in the Morgan Love series. And I write generally in a set of five books. So I'm pretty excited to almost be home. It's bittersweet <laughs> as I come to the end, but I appreciate you teaching middle school. What a blessing. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about how you got started writing these books. Wow. I tell you, I, I've been writing now for 14 years. Um, I have 40 titles in print. Uh, I have a boy wow. series coming out in September that I think we'll probably talk about, and that'll be 45. A boy, a boy series? Correct. The character in here. Oh. We're going to dive into that. And so yes. to answer your question, many years back, I was going into the Christian bookstore, really growing in my Christian walk and met a, my, a young man who is now my husband and we were dating. He was really strong in the Lord and that had not been my experience. A lot of the gentlemen that I come in contact with weren't really walking that or even talking about God. Right. And so to find a God-fearing man, it just really challenged me because if I wanted to be his mate, God had to get me right before I could even think about any of that. Right. So I was really reading a lot of Terry McMillan's books. I don't know if you're familiar with those, Waiting to Exhale, some of those juicy girlfriend type African American yeah. chick lit stuff. Yeah. And I love the dialogue, but I was also reading Max Licato and um, growing in my spiritual nonfiction. I was like, where is the mix? Where is the, you know, cross between this, you know, wonderful, you know, good lit and as well as this juicy nonfiction stuff. Where's this stuff? And I went to the bookstore and I was really disappointed that I couldn't find any characters that I could identify with. Um, it wasn't a bad thing. It just was a, well, wow, there's a whole world of Christian fiction. I didn't even know there was such a thing. But where are the characters that are sort of like me? And um, I just prayed about it right there. And God said, well, why don't you change it? And I, I always wanted to write television and film. And um, he led me to, to, to just do it and write for him. At the time, I was in my early 20s, and I didn't really feel like I could write adult Christian fiction. So that's when I started writing the teen stuff. I'd been there, done that. I felt like I had something to share with the kids. And so there I was, off into writing for, for young people. And most of my titles are, are for youth. Great. Uh, before we go into exactly what this series is about okay. everything, um, I noticed that on your new website, you have a new byline, uh, inspiring readers to live their purpose. Wow. That is really interesting. How does that summarize your work? I think that the, the calling that I really felt to, to change and make a difference and see, just put characters in there that I hadn't really seen. It's interesting when you just talk about living today. We all have issues. Um, you teach in the middle school, have taught there before. I speak in schools all the time, and these kids are like, I can't study because you don't understand. You know, I don't know where I'm going to sleep tonight, or I, be, I think I'm too dumb, or, you know, I don't have any parents, or I don't, I've come to school because I want to eat lunch. I mean, it's issue after issue after issue, particularly in some of the urban schools. And I just felt like if I could write books to help people understand that, yes, though you have issues, if you give it to him, you truly can live your purpose. You can live and be all that God's called you to be. And though it might not be easy, it'll be rewarding when you take your, yourself off of the issues and focus on the positive. What do you have good going on? What is so exciting about your life? And when you know you're full with that, then, then you know, it's all good. Yes. Uh, one of the um, core values that we have here at Heritage of Truth is um, 
pa passing on this heritage of truth, of biblical truth, to the next generation. Um, you were telling me how that shows up in your books. Yes, my character is a second grader at the start of the series. And it's very interesting because she is now, her mom just got remarried, so her dad is in her life, but he's deployed to the military. Uh, and so that's a little tough on her. And now here comes mom getting a new husband. And so she has a stepdad, but her grandparents are really strong in her life. And so it's pretty exciting when you talk about passing on to the next generation that you've got third generation with the grandparents teaching something to the little girl, the parents teaching something to the little girl, and just a blended family idea that God can bring it all, adoption, you know, foster care, no parents at all, you know, broken parents who have to get themselves back right. He can just take the, any kind of family, and when we fall on our knees and ask for his help, he can, as you said, pass it down and really bring us back to the word and that can make us all whole yes um, I was in a psychology class several years ago and um, the professor talked about space cadets wow and um, you know we were all said what are you talking about space cadets and he said well you know when um, one of when the um, I'm not I, I don't remember exactly what it was so I won't use the name okay. but one of the um, uh, spaceship shuttles you know went up as they're coming, there's a, a certain uh, place where they are in the atmosphere when Earth cannot communicate to them, and they, you know, so there's there's this cycle, um, and the only way that they can communicate with them is to put a satellite in that orbit with them, and then they're they're able to communicate. And he said, you know, we need more space cadets. It's like you know the parents maybe cannot completely understand and communicate with their child. The grandparents maybe aren't there, or you know, we're not we're not a peer. I can see this as you're giving them a peer who understands, and if this character has some biblical background or right. some good morals, I can see how that would be a space cadet in that. In I that love space. it because it's hard for kids to sometimes look at themselves, their own life. They don't. They, it's so tough when it's you. You don't mm -hmm. want to really look at things you're doing wrong, things you need to do better. You know, that's self-reflection. We as adults, we understand that a little bit yes. more. But when you can show a kid someone else, an example, then they're sometimes like, oh, I think I'm like that. And so exactly what you're saying is what I want to put in the books, as well as going back to the to passing it down. My mom used to say it, it takes a village to raise a, a child. Yes. And so I'm, I want to be a part of that village for a lot of our youth today, that you don't have to feel like you can't make it. You don't have to feel like you can't be all that you want to be. You can't feel like you can't reach your dreams. You can do it. You can be awesome. You can achieve. You can do the right thing. That is great. Um, now there are some interesting features about your series that I have never seen yes. <laughs> in a, uh, a children's book or a young adult fiction book or whatever. Um, so tell us a little bit about that. Well I'm so excited you asked because I'm a mother of three. My kids are getting a little older now. I have two high schoolers and a middle school um, young person. And it's just interesting because when you talk about struggling readers or kids needing to pass tests and those types of things, I'm excited that I have created a neat formula that I have seven, seven bolded words per chapter. So it, and it's seven chapters in the book. So it's 49 words a kid would learn in the book with definitions and um, all of that, and the other fun thing is that I have these are hard words. Hard too. words, yeah. Souvenir, phenomenal. Yes. Oh, that is. That's you break awesome. it down. You tell yes. whether it's an adjective or a noun. And the interesting thing is, they seem hard for second, third, fourth graders, but they're um, words that are on the state mandated list that these kids need to know. And if we're not exposing it to them when they see it on the test, how do we expect them to be successful? Yes. Particularly for, for an urban market when the kids don't normally talk like that daily. Um, and then I have state standard um, workbook pages in the back, which is so fun. So this is something that a teacher could pick up and use. That is awesome. So hopefully classroom sets. So we're, we're excited to see where God's going to take it. That is awesome. Oh my goodness, I would be really <laughs> excited about that. <laughs> um, so, what are some of the issues that the characters deal with here? Well, again, she is now learning that she has this new stepfather, and mom is also pregnant. So, she's the character seven. It's only been you and mom for the longest, and now here comes new dad, here comes new baby. Well, wait, all the attention used to be on me, says the little girl. And so now she has to learn to share. 
to have the right attitude. Again, her, her biological father, her dad, all she, that she's known is going away to a war. She doesn't know if he's going to come back. And she just feels like, you know what, Lord, you say you love me, but why does it feel like things are not going right? And so I teach the young people that God loves us. He cares. And, and as we all sort of know, you know, he won't put more on us than we can bear. And he wants us to cast all our cares on him. And I, putting those nuggets in a book for kids to learn that you have to have the right attitude is, is what I'm excited about. All right, uh, you've just quoted a scripture. Do you actually put the scripture in the book? I do. Just kind of allude to it. I put the scripture in the book as well as there's always a biblical story in each of the books, too. Um, where it, it might be uh, Jesus um, turning the, taking the five loaves of bread and the, the water and turning feeding the multitude. Yes. I mean, it could be different different stories, but it's each book has an actual biblical story that ties into the principle of the story. I dealt with I deal with bullying. You asked me about issues. Oh wow! Yeah, because it's really present. Yes. And I just yes. was so bummed out in elementary that it's so tough. But the kids are cruel and they need to learn that that's not right. And when you say, as you, you, one of your other, I guess, mantras for you guys here is that you need to live out what you say. Yes, live the biblical worldview, yeah. How, how can you say that you love the Lord, but you're going to go into school and be mean to somebody? <laughs> you know, so if you're really going to love them, if you really care, um, even though they might be mean to you, pray for them. You know, go home and talk to your parent. Go get on your knees. Um, but you don't have to retaliate and be mean back. So I like to teach them some of those fun things. Now, you mentioned that when the series starts, she's in the second grade. Correct. Does she get older with each book, or how does that work? That's a great question. Um, I write what's called bridge series. Um, two books in one grade, then the summer, and then two books in another grade. So this particular series takes place over a two-year time frame. The first two books, she's in the second grade, first semester, second semester, then the summer for book three, and book four, the start of this one, she's in the third grade, and the last book would be the second semester of the third grade, around that testing time, you know, and test anxiety, and no fear is the, the name of the last book. Yes. Oh. I can't wait to read all of them. Oh, no, you're making my heart melt. Thank you. Oh, goodness. Uh, if we want to know more, do you have a website or how can we find out more? I do. My website is stephanieperrymore.com. Um, please, I would love to hear from any of your viewers. It would be a blessing. And um, they can also buy the books wherever books are sold. Right. Thank you. Stephanie, thanks thank for you all so much. <laughs> and thanks for having me on okay. the show. Okay.